Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and today we're going to be working on a little rocking chair. We see quite a few rocking chairs in the Secret Underground Laboratory, and uh, most of those are these small children's rocking chairs. Even though the applique is almost completely worn away, I can see this is a Care Bears chair. Friends bring in something, sunshine with a copyright date on the uh, label here of 1982. What we need to do today is make a new rocker and then repair these legs because the tenons are broken off where they stick into the rocker. And I've got a nice piece of clean, clear pine here that I'm intending to use. It'll work well. Now, I know it's just two holes, and it would be real tempting to try and drill these freehand. Maybe put a couple of little blocks and wedges underneath them, or, or something like that. But it's not worth the aggravation. It may take a little bit of time, but I can make this jig and drill these holes in the exact right position be done with it. I really do need to get a new bit. The only really tricky thing here is remembering that since it's a compound angle, you've got to duplicate it in a mirror image so that uh, that comes out sticking up straight like that and this will come out sticking up straight like that.
rocket chair rockers are not a true curve. In fact, they're only a curve between the legs. This is so that if you're sitting there rocking comfortably, you go all the way to the front, you get a flat spot, and then you don't tip out of your rocking chair. Same thing in the back. You roll all the way to the back, there's another flat spot. Keeps you from rolling over backwards. Now, most rocking chairs, the legs are perfectly vertical. On this one, they happen to be canted over. And what that means is they have to have a kind of a crown on the bottom of here so you won't be riding on the edge. And I'm going to have to duplicate that on this new rocker that I just cut. This is a Stanley number 60 combination spoke shave. It's got a curved blade on one side and a flat blade on the other. I think it's probably made around 1905 to 1910, somewhere around there. You can actually look all this stuff up online and find people who disagree on just about everything. It's what feature means, what uh, time it was made. But this is exactly the job that this spoke shave was made to do, which is to make a very slight crown on the edge of a board like this. It's time to put this thing together, make sure everything fits, which I'm fairly confident that it will, but never skip the dry fit. When it's time to have glue all over your fingers and glue all over everything else, that's not when you want any surprises to pop up. Okay. Now all I have to do is take it apart, put glue where it's supposed to be, and then figure out some kind of creative clamping to hold it until everything sets. I like rope clamps like this, especially when working on chairs because they pull everything towards the center. I'll let this sit overnight and take it apart and put a little bit of paint to uh, match this as close as possible. This chair will be ready to go. So this is Brian Jage for the Secret Underground Laboratory and thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. We really appreciate it if you click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be coming out with more videos real soon. And again, I, I thank you.